this is Alicia. And this is Rafa. And this is what does it feel like to care for a parent with dementia and or Alzheimer's. So today we're going to be talking to our friend Tammy, whose mom, I think in the past two years was diagnosed with dementia. Has it been two years or longer? It's actually been four and a half. Oh, wow. wow. I know it's gone by quickly. Wow. Very quickly. Well, welcome to the show, and I'm so thank happy you. To Hi, everyone. Your story, your story with us today. Rafa's. Um, you can give us a little history on your mother, who's suffering from. Yeah, Alzheimer's. my mother has Alzheimer's, and she was diagnosed. Oh boy, it's been a long time, well over 15 years. But now, I think with. Um, uh, the pandemic and and being quarantined and also having a fall, just going through trauma, it accelerated the process to where now she's in stage in stage seven Alzheimer's, which is the final stage. Yeah. Wow, I'm sorry. So, Tammy, you want to tell us about what happened with your mom that made you first recognize that something may be going on with her? My oldest sister and I. Um, we were there visiting my stepfather, um, had MDS. So it was, it's basically like a bone marrow disease. Um, and he went through the motions for about four years. And towards the end, he was getting about two blood transfusions a week. So, you know, he was never in any pain. They knew that he, you know, the time was coming because he was just slowing down and um my mother never showed any signs of anything she took care of her husband helped him through what he was going through and it was probably i'm gonna say maybe about four to six months um just something wasn't right my sister and i just kind of noticed some some little things and you know we all took our turns going up and visiting her because she had lost her husband and our stepfather. Um, so long story short, we took her to a specialist and they said that because her grief was so strong, um, like she had lost her soulmate. And um, they said that that very well is what threw her into dementia because she was so depressed which I did not know that was a thing. I did not know that something like that could happen. I never knew that either, that depression can throw someone into dementia. And actually even researching that they said depression and stress can kick in dementia. It's crazy. It is crazy. The mind is a powerful and scary thing. Yes. Very much so. So, um, once you spoke with your doctor and he, her doctor, and he had Mm -hmm. advised you that she was in dementia, what was the next plan? What happened? She was in Georgia. You, you both are here in Florida. You and your sister. It was funny because, um, we made sure to get her a female specialist and my oldest sister and I, and as you well know, my mother, she's sassy anyway. So when we took her and she was diagnosed, she was, um, there was a little banter back and forth. The doctor was telling her that she's in first stages of dementia. No, I'm not. Um, you are, no. So it was just kind of, that part was a little bit funny, yes. but it, um, but it was just a little bit of a slow progression in the beginning. Um, because yes, we do live here. She lived up in, in Helen, up in the mountains. So it was very hard. And my mother is a very independent person. She's very adamant about things. When she wants to do something, she wants to do it. So it was several years. It took us several years to get her down here. We had someone come up there and um, check on her every day for about a five-hour period just so she wasn't alone. Because up there, um, there's there's not a lot to do. So um, it just came to a point. She also fell a few times her driveway because she lives in the mountains was on an incline and she would still want to bring her garbage cans up, go get the mail. And she did fall twice 
And it was just getting to the point where it was no longer safe to have her there alone. That's smart. You know, I had to go through the same thing with my mom, with her signs that my biggest thing was trying to preserve her independence. So I got her into independent living. So at least she wasn't alone in one of these apartments Mm -hmm. in downtown, which was convenient, right? You didn't need to have a vehicle anymore. She actually turned in her car. She felt like she didn't need to have a car. Well, truth is she didn't want to have a car payment. She just gave it away to the bank. She didn't, want, she didn't want that responsibility anymore. She didn't want that car payment, but you know, she can walk to public. She can walk to Lake Eola. Um, and then the people in, in the building had their own community. So she had two really close friends that would help her write checks for the rent, which was only like three fifty a month. And also uh, teach her how to take the bus to go get her haircut, to go shopping. And those two friends of hers became her core And after they passed away, I started to notice even a greater decline talking about depression, her, her, her two rocks after they passed away. Then I started to really see the descent a lot faster, you know, where she would start walking the halls at night, knocking on people's doors and things like that. Yeah. It's very difficult. My, my mom was doing the same thing. She would, whoever she spoke to the last on the phone redial redial like she would constant and my my oldest sister was the one that she usually called but it was yeah in the beginning she was kind of going through her phases um but now she's having as you probably know you know i mean she's the place she's in is great they make sure that they're very very busy to keep them occupied but it's um i think just the hardest thing is you know, not knowing what to do. Yeah. Not it's knowing okay. if you're saying the right thing. Um, it's hard. I mean, as, as, as you know, it, it's hard. Yeah. It's very hard to see your parents age like that and knowing them and knowing what's important to them and dignity and their intelligence and their humor and seeing that slip Go away. away. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult. Yeah, because it was a few months ago. My husband and I were going to see her separately because Alan was going to um, take a bike ride after. So I wanted him to go first to see if she recognized him because he's either with me or, you know, my oldest sister. We all go together and she actually did not recognize him. But the more they spoke, you know, his voice was familiar and so when I got there, they had about a 20 minute long conversation and he said that she was completely on point. And the hardest thing for me is she's told me this before, but she also told Ellen that sometimes she feels like she's going crazy, mm. which I, I can't even. It, I can't it, even it, it's hard. It's hard. And, and, you know, When I was visiting my mom, I guess she had a neighbor across the hallway. I think that was more advanced. And when I would go visit, I would hear the the lady in her apartment, like yelling, like with this rage. And I'm like, what's going on over there? She goes, she's just frustrated. And it clicked. And that's what happens. And I've had little moments with my mom where she forgot something and she gets pissed and she lashes out. Um, Something as simple as we were taking her to the DMV to get her license renewed and it turned out that it was mailed to her we didn't need to go there and she got really upset and and i just let her walk it off and get some air and i'm gonna let you know something because i do this with my family all the time don't play the guessing game with them to see that's feeding into your own egos whether they recognize you or not don't even do that just say hey this is alicia hey this is rafa it's good to see Mm -hmm. you And I keep telling my family that like a few months ago, they were like, do you know who I am or what is that? I'm like, don't do that. You're just going to frustrate them more. Just tell them, Hey, cousin so-and-so it's great to see you start off with that because you don't want them to go through that struggle. Like, well, crap, who the hell is this person? And and then they get frustrated or emotional. So, you know, and I I get where Alan was coming from, but my sister and I, we kind of wanted to know on what level she was at. Yeah. They weren't really telling us, 
and it comes and it it goes, it comes and it goes, you'll you'll have a good day where she's completely Mm -hmm. lucid. And then you'll have a day where she'd be like, who are you? What's going on here? It comes and it goes. And you guys will learn, you guys will learn about it. We haven't got to that point yet, except unfortunately with Alan, but then after, you know, about 15 minutes, you said that he had a great conversation. Um, but yeah, that hasn't happened with us yet, but I feel like when it's just amazing that a week could go by and it, it's just completely different. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely different. But I know deep down they're probably very frustrated in their head because they know what they want to say, what they want to get out and they just can't. But I, I, I truly Ooh. believe that they know when we're there and when, can I, can I ask you both, what kind of support have you received or sought out to help you with dealing with this new, you know, with this disease and your in with your mothers? Have you received any support or to help you? No, I, you know, <laughs> People don't like to talk about it. That's the reality of it. it you right. know, especially close relatives. And I'm not poo-pooing my close relatives. They 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 offer support like, hey, like my cousin was really good about, hey, I can go check in on her if you want to go take a trip or anything like that. Having that mm-hmm. support is great. But sometimes some people just don't want to talk about it or they just like a snowed over version of it. So, um, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I am not one to read. (laughs) If it's not written by JK Rowling, I know it's horrible. I love reading fiction, but I am terrible at reading like how to books. And I know there's a ton of books out there about that. And I, with today's world and a short attention span, believe it or not, there's a, a, a lot of resources online, you know, UCLA um, health was a good resource for me on YouTube. They have a, they have these wonderful basic instructional videos on, on learning how to, um, uh, be a caregiver for someone with dementia. Um, and a lot of it's just very basic. You're like, oh, okay, I never thought about that. You know, letting them feel right. like they still have a sense of control, having patience with their agitation, understanding mm-hmm. um, some of their apprehension and co- cognizant behavior. So there's a lot of resources out there, but like support groups, not really, <laughs> you know, um, I, I tried Facebook once and it, it kind of backfired, you know, people get a little weird on, on that stuff, but um, I'm just lucky that I have a partner that um, uh, has a master's in, in um, psychology and always um, puts things into perspective for me. And Tammy, you're going to get to this point where, um, you know, her last birthday, I'm like, well, what do I do? You know, because like Christmas, she didn't know how to open the package. She didn't understand what was going on. I'm like, well, what should I do for her birthday? She doesn't even know that it's her birthday. And he said, do it for yourself. And I did, I baked her a cake, um, rum cake, which is one of her favorites um, from scratch and brought the candles and the balloons out. I didn't really get her a gift, but I got the candles and the balloons and the look on her face was priceless. priceless. Oh, she she knew. Mm -hmm. So little things like that, you know, uh, things that I've learned along the way, like we've talked before about um, giving them a baby doll. Somehow a lot of women revert to their childhood and they love that maternal instinct of nurturing a baby. So I I bought my mom a realistic baby doll and that was like the best hundred bucks I've ever spent in my life (laughs) to give her a bit of joy for, for a couple of years. Um, It was worth it. Is she still attached to the baby doll or no? Um, no, but it's nearby and I'll hold okay. it for her. And I says, do, cause she can't hold it anymore. Um, she, you know, she's at that, she's at that stage where she can't hold it anymore. She has a um, plush toy that she hangs on to for her, her nervous twitch because with Alzheimer's, it's just the deterioration of the brain. People don't realize that they think it's just a memory loss. It's not a memory loss. Your brain is literally de- coming up coming apart. So, um, so she just has the twitch where she's like holding on to, but her baby doll is at the foot of her bed with an eyesight. So she can look at it. So once in a while, I bring it to her to kiss it. Like, don't forget to say, you know, kiss the baby. <laughs> oh, that's so, yeah. I, I think that's really good um, advice. Tammy, do you have any yeah. advice to anybody that's dealing with? Um, well, unfortunately, because Alan is having his meeting, but his mother suffered from Lewy body's disease, mm-hmm. which I was not familiar with. Um, I think it took a dozen doctors and she was finally diagnosed at the Mayo Clinic. 
So um, Lewy body's disease is Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and dementia. Oh, and it's like a like a trifecta in a bad way. Yeah. I mean, there's always one disease that is more prominent than the other, but they do have all three. And it, um, yeah, it, it, it was very, very difficult. During that time. Very difficult. Tammy, um, I have a question. Uh, so, um, yes. what do you do for yourself in, in, you know, for your own well being? Cause I know you're so focused on being a caregiver, but what do you do for yourself? Actually, um, it's nice because when I'm at work and if, if I have a break during the day, um, my mother, oh, and I, I apologize, but I was going to say when we were, when Alicia was asking about support groups and whatnot, mm -hmm. my oldest sister and I went to, she looked into it and we found support groups at Atria at Lake Forest whether you had someone in the facility, if you didn't have anyone, everyone was welcome to come. So we went a few times at beautiful facility, but the people were so incredibly welcoming, just amazing. Some people had people in the facility, some people didn't. It, it was just nice that they wanted to be there for other people that didn't know what to expect because a lot of people like don't know the difference between Alzheimer's or dementia or Lewy bodies. Cause it is very confusing. Mm -hmm. So actually that's where we ended up bringing her. So she's been at, um, Atria Lake Forest for, um, a year now. And it is an amazing facility, but they've got great support groups whether you have someone in the facility or if you don't, they welcome everyone. And that actually, and this was before we kind of knew where my mom was going, but it was in the very, very early stages, but we wanted to kind of be a little more proactive. Mm -hmm. So that helped us out tremendously. They were amazing. I have a friend, um, a, co a work colleague that's going through it right now with her mom. Her mom's still on her own, but she's having um, memory issues, very forgetful. You know, we'll say something and then a few minutes later, not remember that she said it. So she did go on, like you said, Rafa, and found a support group on Facebook that helped her mm -hmm. as well. So I think you just have to look out there. And like you said, where you had taken your mom. Yeah. They had a support group there. So yeah. there's something for everyone, as long as you have an outlet or a resource of information, you know, so you're not feel like you're winging it, you know? Right. Um, right. So there's a huge resource on a side note though. Um, even though when my mom was very early diagnosed and she was still, I just call it crazy old lady, Spanish lady syndrome, where she just talks too much and gets on my nerves. But, and Alicia knows this, I, you know, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I started, she started talking smack about somebody in the car and I just decided to start recording her conversation without her knowing, but I'm, I'm glad I did that because it became a regular thing. Like maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks, riding in the car with Delia or what it's like shopping with Delia. Right. And, um, I haven't done it since she's declined because I can't take her out of her home, you know, and I miss that. I miss, I miss those moments where we would have those, you know, pain and I call her my pain in the ass, you know, my mom. I love watching those though. She's so You've sassy. seen those. So oh, she's adorable. So she's yesterday adorable. I, I, on Sunday, I, I ran into a friend of mine that I haven't seen in months and, and he just came up to me and goes, you've done so well. And I'm telling you this because you're going to need to be reminded about this. You've done so well by your mom. You know, I miss the videos. I miss the pictures and everything, but you've done so much for her that that's incredible. It's inspirational. And sometimes we forget because you get so caught up in the moment and don't be, ever beat yourself up. And that was my thing. I would beat myself up. Like I could do more. I could have done more. Um, know that you are the fact that you're having this conversation, the fact that you're reaching out and looking for resources, you are doing so much for your mom. So I want you to understand that. 
you both, and I'm here saying I I know you both very well, and you both do so much for your moms. I see it, and I know they you're giving them comfort. The That's best so that you can. Yeah. Thank you, and Rafa, you've been awesome to me because you've reached out and given me like the best advice, and, and just it just made me feel so much better. Thank I'm you so much. I'm I honored to. You. I'm honored to, I'm honored to, and, and don't ever hesitate to reach out for anything, even if it's just need to vent, like, you know. Thank okay. you. I, I love you both. That. You both are doing a great job, and I know it's hard because I went through it with my dad. So I'm sending you both love. So I wanted to give a couple um, statistics on dementia. 50- yeah, no more crying. No more crying. Yeah, no more crying. <laughs> 55 million. <laughs> People worldwide live with dementia. Dementia is the seventh leading cause of death. And um, it's 65. They consider it um, the age uh, is 65 and older. 65 and younger make up about 9%. And we're all early 50s. So for us saying that, because I'm always afraid too, am I going to have dementia, Alzheimer's? anything. So I was reading on prevention of it. So preventing is watching your weight, physical activity, doing mind games, keeping your blood under check, your sugar. If you smoke, quit smoking ASAP and also limit your alcohol intake. All of those contribute. If you know, you're not taking care of it can contribute to dementia once you get you know, that makes that makes sense about the mind games. Cause one thing I did learn about doing my little videos with my mom in the car, what sparked it was that she was talking about the night she got married. And that's why I started recording it. Cause she said, Oh, so-and-so is a virgin. I'm like, how do you know she's a virgin? I know I, was a vir- I know she's a virgin because I was a virgin on my wedding night. And I'll just going to send you a little side story. She's, I said, really? that's how I hit record. That's how it started. <laughs> and she was like, yes, I was a virgin till our wedding night. And I liked it. <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she said, the next morning, your father told me, I know how you ladies are. When you guys get together to talk about me, you make sure you let them know I'm extra large. <laughs> like, I bet you loved hearing. You're like, you're a real person, mom and dad. It is That's so, so ever funny. Since, ever since that happened, Tammy, I always thought that, you know, with my mom, she'll forget oh. about a conversation a week ago, or did she pay the bill or, you know, all these other things. I so what I would do, do is that, make her, though. I would make I her talk about, that. I would, no, I would, yeah, we all do. Yeah. I would make her talk about the past. Like, do you remember mm-hmm. my first birthday when you got me the ice cream cake that I dropped, you know, and right. they, whether or not they remember accurately, it gets them going. Yeah. So that's the one thing I did learn was about get them to recollect the past, those happy, you know, I do. I completely agree with that. And let me tell you something, you hit on a big key. So I, I have always had a memory of an elephant. Rafa kind of does. I don't want anybody (laughs) else to know. So one thing that I do to keep my memory sharp, which, you know, when you get busy in your jobs, we forget about taking care of ourselves, which is very important is if you have any memories that you love, think about them. That's what they talk about is you want to recall those memories. So if you have times in your life that mean a lot to you, pull that memory out and think about it. Remember what you're wearing, what the smells and do it often. And you'll be able to keep that memory. So that's another tool you can use to keep your memories alive. So when you have something happen, like going to the beach, take that. It's okay. Take that memory and think about it. Go ahead, Tammy. It's fine. Because like, sorry, because Rafa asked me, I don't know, seven minutes ago, Tammy, (laughs) what do you actually do for yourself? And I never answered the question. Oh, that's that's right. Right. What do you do? do? I didn't, I, I didn't answer the question. I don't do enough. Good. At least you know that. And now maybe you can start taking, taking care of yourself and what you do to, to keep, you know, self-care, whether it's going for a massage, whether it's going out to eat for dinner. I do do that. Okay. Well, I've seen you. You do. You're you're all about self-care. What? What? You're all about self-care, right? But we're talking about here and here. 
this right. this self care and this self care. Mm-hmm. You know? Right, it's different. Um, but my my Mackenzie, my my dog, I adore her. She will be eleven. She's ninety five pounds. She gets in the bed, puts her head on the pillow, and I spoon with her like Aww. that is my. That's that is my days. decompression, and she knows when I need it the most. She Thank does. You know. Well, if Mackenzie has a TikTok account, let me know. I'll follow her. So she she doesn't, but you need to. <laughs> I probably should. I probably should. She sounds like a wonderful dog. My little That's ostrich is giving you a hug. Giving you guys. Oh, she's <laughs> adorable. And she does a little toe dancing. Yeah, a little ballet. <laughs> a little ballet. So <laughs> thank you, Tammy, for sharing your story with your mom. And thank you, Rafa, too. Because I know you guys are in the midst thank of it. You. And I know it can be very difficult. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being on. No recap today, but our next episode is, so tune in. What does it feel like to come out of the closet late in life?